is Dr. Eric Fishman with EHR-TV, and I have the pleasure today of speaking with Dr. Richard Lowe, founder, CEO, and president of Praxis EMR. Uh, Richard, a long trip for you to come here, both geographically as well as metaphorically, and so thank you very much for, for joining us. Thank you very much, Eric. I, you are wonderful. Everybody respects you. Well, th thank you. And uh, as I understand it, over 20 years ago, you had the idea to start a process to simplify how physicians can document their medical care. That is correct. And that was the birth of Praxis EMR. Right. So, so tell us about that 20 years ago. Yes. You're a physician. I'm a physician. We understand the problem. The problem is charting. Uh, I hated it. I never met a colleague who likes to chart, and I've asked this a thousand million times. You don't like to chart, do you? Nobody likes to chart. Nobody likes to chart. Some people dislike it, some people dislike it intensively. I hated it passionately, and I also felt it was a very stupid endeavor. And when you think that something is stupid, a, a bell should go in your mind saying that a computer could do it, okay? Because computers cannot do smart things but they certainly can do stupid things. But just because a computer can do it doesn't mean it can do ah, it better. Exactly. Uh, you, uh, the problem is not the computer, it's the programming, right? But that's how the whole idea started. I was very fortunate to meet 20 years ago with a group of brilliant programmers, and we began to look at the possible solutions, and we found the templates available then right away. And, and we found templates wanting even back then. Templates arose almost right away because they were the takeoff on the old macros from WordPerfect. You know, and the idea was that the template would help the doctor not have to chart in free text. Uh, but that was not a solution, and that's how we got started, realizing that uh, there had to be a better way. And how did you get the thought of this non-templated method of uh, producing a record? I wish I remembered, okay? It wasn't my idea. I'm not that smart. Uh, we had a group of brilliant programmers and we began to see what the problems with the templates are. In fact, I would dare say, I mean, the industry thinks that the reason doctors don't like electronic medical records, and they're right, doctors don't like electronic medical records in general, is because doctors are stupid, because doctors are computer phobic, because doctors don't like technology, because they don't embrace new technology. I've heard all sorts of insanities, except the obvious one, namely that what they're being presented does not work. And when you look at the EMRs, what doesn't work is the template part. Medicine cannot be boilerplated. Medicine, as you know, is an art. Now, many people who are not doctors don't understand this, but medicine is very unique to the person, to the individual who's practicing it. And nobody wants to be uh, told how to practice by remote control. They say if so you give two orthopedic surgeons an operation that needs to be done, they'll give you three opinions. That's right, that exactly it. right. And that's the beauty of medicine. That's what doctors like to do. Doctors, as you know, are spending two and a half hours a day charting. That's about 14 years of your life doing nothing but going to a room to write. And that's not why we went to medical school. Those two things came together, and we realized then that there was an alternative solution. And, and that's that what we developed, the concept processor. And tell us about the concept processor. Yeah, the concept processor is a, a, a truly dramatically different approach than templates. Uh, basically allows you, the doctor, to chart at the speed of the mind. And the speed of the mind is far faster than the speed of the mouth, and a lot less errors. Because the problems when we, when we write or dictate is that we make human errors in expression, which the computer does not make. It's charting at the speed of the mind. How does it work? Very simple. Number one is what we said before. Medicine is an art form, which means that not two doctors practice it the same way. Namely, every doctor is unique. Not only the way the doctor charts medicine, but the way the doctor practices medicine, the way the doctor thinks of medicine. But number two, that for any given provider, there is a bell-shaped frequency distribution of cases that you see. Some cases are extremely rare. Some cases I studied in medical school I've never seen in my life. Other cases you see three, you know, five times a day, five times a week, five times a month, right? Okay, so what our software does, it uses a neural network artificial intelligence engine, which we call a concept processor, that searches for and finds within a couple of seconds, very intuitively, the text of the closest encounter that you personally have ever seen in relation to the encounter you need to generate right now. So imagine for a second there was a gene in the computer that can find from among thousands of different encounters the one that most closely resembles the one you need to generate right now, and does, he can do that. Does it find it at the beginning of the exa examination? Right, right or? there, at the beginning. Right there, in, in front of, when you're in front of the patient. Does it change ever? Oh you? yeah, uh, when he finds it, you're looking at it, and you say, <laughs> okay, there are three logical possibilities. Number one is that the closest possible encounter is exactly what you need right now. As you know, most of us make a diagnosis for most cases in a tenth of a second. So that's not an issue. You the problem is, you know it. is we know exactly what we want to say, right? The problem is generating the litany. Now, if the case is identical, 
you are done. Now, medical schools say that there is no such thing as an identical patient because there is no, su no such thing as an identical case because there is no such thing as an identical patient. But how many times have you found yourself charting the same way? Very commonly. It happens. Every so often I'll get a doctor say, no, I never chart the same way. You know, we look at the records of that doctor, he's charted the same way. It's impossible. But, Charting but, but is a projection a, of the mind. But that can be accomplished by a template. No, because the template was written by somebody else. I didn't say you chart like somebody else. Okay. I said you chart the, w the same way the way you want to chart, not the way somebody else wants to chart. And so tell us the two other options. All right, so, so the first possibility is that the case is identical. It happens. I'm not going to say it's very frequent, but it happens. The second possibility is that the case is not identical, but very similar to one that you've done in the past. And the third possibility, the only one left, is you're dealing with a rare case, a farcinoma, a zebra. You've never seen it before. Okay, if the case is identical, you're done charting. Praxis would chart fast and you can speak. And you cannot argue with it because you wrote it yourself, albeit for another patient that in your opinion was identical. But Praxis doesn't stop at the note. At the same time as it generates the note, it will generate all your prescriptions, send them to the pharmacy instantly, all your laboratory orders, all your instructions to your patient, all your procedure reports in the office procedures, they're done, all the admitting orders to the hospital, all the letters to referring providers, and even the super bill, and it's all done instantly. You're seeing your next patient. If the case is similar, it finds you the closest case. You say, you know, this is almost what I want. You edit it. You can edit basically by typing or using a dragon, naturally speaking, which is, in my opinion, the only, it's not the best, it's the only way to use uh, transcription today. Dragon will type everything you say, right? So you're in free text, you're changing the thing to meet what you need to do right now, and you're done. But Praxis will memorize on the fly all the changes you just made. So if in the future you see a case that falls between the two closest encounters, your editing falls off by half the next time, the quarter, an eighth, until eventually becomes a projection of your mind and you will be charting at the speed of your mind most of your cases. How long does that process take for a physician to, to wake up? Because I'm sure that the first day that they're using your product, right. it's still a struggle. They're all a struggle oh, no, day no, one. No, no. How I long mean, until the physician a great says, aha, I'm ready? Eric, that is the best question that we were asked, uh, and we didn't know the answer to that 20 but years you know, ago. But you now know. Right. Uh, and we didn't care, because 20 years ago, as I said, I hated charting so much that if I said that if I would spend a whole year of my life having to teach the system and the rest of my life I never had to chart again, it was worth it. I want to spend two hours a day the rest of my life. I had better things to do. However, the answer is dramatically less than that, and that is not intuitive. Dramatically less than a year. Uh, dramatically less than a month. Now, why would that be? The reason has nothing to do with medicine, it has to do with English. The Oxford English Dictionary, as you know, has 450,000 words. We don't use them all. But the average college educated adult only uses 1,500 over the 450,000 words, although no two of us are uses the same set of words. When you put words, but we don't use words to speak. We believe we use words. I mean, you'll agree with me that we don't think in letters. Nobody thinks in letters, but we don't even think in words. Concepts. We think in concepts and strings of words, all right, or sentences or phrases. And when you talk about that, that's a lot less than 1,500. When you say well-developable nurse may only know how to distress, you're not even that's thinking one. about it. And many times you're dictating in the middle of the night half asleep, and you are half asleep because you're not doing it. Your subconscious is. Praxis will never compete against the consciousness of the doctor. He or she is always in charge. But he, the Praxis can do the much better than the subconscious of the mind and can put that litany out much faster than the subconscious. So basically, you are concept, you are in, it encapsulates all of your concepts. It's not that it brings the closest encounter text in toto and then you change. No, no, no. It encapsulates all the units of thought of the concept and, you can, and it recycles them by using neural network by learning from your past. You have to see the product. We cannot describe it better. Uh, I, I've seen it and it's uh, very intriguing, uh, very effective. And so the physician has been working with Praxis for a few months. They're now happy with it. How much less than the two and a half hours oh, a day? Oh, down to 15 minutes a day. And that's the reason we developed it. But imagine our incredible surprise when we learn that that's not the major feature of Praxis by any means of imagination. As you know, we're rated number one in user satisfaction by the American Many. Academy of Family Physicians, but not because we save all the time, but because we improve dramatically the quality of medicine. Explain how that happens. All right, think about this. Most of the errors in medicine, think about that bell-shaped curve. Most of the errors in medicine do not happen at the edges of the bell-shaped curve with the rare cases. Not only because a rare case is rare, and therefore a rare mistake is rare, but when you see a rare case, you wake up. That's when you call your colleagues, you admit the patient to the hospital. You're not going to make a mistake in the rare case. You're making a mistake in the case that you do a million times. You forget to order something you knew you should have ordered. Errors of commission, human errors, indefensible errors. But you see, if you've done it correctly before, 
you can use your own chart the way a pilot uses a checklist to make sure that nothing is forgotten or overlooked, that all your T's are crossed and all your I's are dotted. If you made a mistake before on another patient, then you say, oh my God, I made a mistake last time, you correct it now, you cannot make that mistake in the future, which means that your random errors decrease with time. Now, until about three years ago, this was a very strange concept, and then three years ago, as you, as you may know, Dr. Atul Gawande in the, in, the, in the New England Journal of Medicine published a paysetter paper uh, that now is known as the Checklist Manifesto, where he lowered mortality, intra-surgical mortality, by 36%. Uh, it's an amazing project, and now the New England Journal has put him as one of the greatest discoveries of, of medicine in the last 150 years, together with the invention of anesthesia. And what he does is a checklist. The chart can be used in a different way than what we've conceptualized it up to now. You know, right now the chart is a dead record where you write everything not to get sued, to get paid, and to keep your license. But now you can use your chart to really practice better medicine. And our doctors begin to be reminded by what they think is important. They can argue with it. They wrote it, and they don't forget the little things. In addition to that, now with Praxis 5, we've gone way beyond charting. Not only can you chart, but the chart can be a springboard to remind you to do things. For example, if I see a patient and I want to do an MRI in six months, the system will remember, as I put it in the chart, and it will remind the front office to call the patient for an MRI in six months. But the next time I have another patient just like that, hey, do you want to do an MRI in six months? Do you want to do a mammogram in six months, in three months? Do you want to refer the patient to an ophthalmology? Uh, for diabetes in a year, begins to remember to remember in three dimensions. No template can do that because the template maker has to be also a doctor. He has to remember how to, how, you know, for, for this you have to do that. We can't macro-manage a doctor. May as well give up the license and go back to, you know, become a technician. In fact, they're trying to do that, as you know, in the, in the I don't know, in the Sloan Kettering Institute, creating this robot that won on Jeopardy, and that's trying to practice <laughs> medicine. Well, when that happens, maybe practice will not be a good idea. <laughs> Richard, you have thousands of users. Give us a couple of anecdotes of some of the, using, of the users, what they say about how Praxis is Well, them. one of them it was not an anecdote from a user. Uh, it was an anecdote from the daughter of a user okay. who said, please, she wrote a little letter, very nice little girl, she said, please tell my daddy to stop talking about Praxis during the <laughs> The problem is it's addictive. The doctors all of a sudden get excited about it. We have evangelist physicians. We're not well known because we don't do marketing, as you know. You're one of the few people who understands, so you've put us on. But basically, we sell by word of mouth and also by the service. We're number one, the service is difficult to, 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 to exclude us. But we don't spend millions of dollars in marketing. So what the doctors do is they tell us how they've improved the quality of medicine. We won the Hims Davis Award this year, one of our doctors. Congratulations, did. I saw uh, that. We won the Frost and Sullivan Healthcare Innovation Award this year. Um, but primordially, that we're number one in all the ratings in quality of medicine even though what we are known for is saving time. And the two things come one among two. What do you see on the horizon in the next couple of years? What new developments are you anticipating with Praxis? Oh, we are, everything moves around the concept. The, the concept of Praxis is very Kantian. It moves, it, it basically places, for example, I'll tell doctors something that's very shocking. I'll say, doctor, I'm gonna make a statement that sounds very crazy to you, but will sound very crazy. Think about it for a second. A diagnosis has nothing to do with what's wrong with the patient. A diagnosis everything to do with what you think is wrong with the patient. Big difference between that. Well, fact hopefully, that, hopefully not in most cases. Well, the fact is, what you do, what you think is wrong with the patient is what's going to be charted, what you're going to be acting on, and what you're going to be doing until you change your mind. Right. Right. I mean, it's you. I mean, it's not the, the chart. Everything has to do with your mind. Practice a projection of your mind as a doctor. Now, the fact is, most doctors want to be practice good medicine, so they're constantly learning and practicing automatic habit changer. So what we see in the future are many things. For example, we're coming out with a new, we have a portal, but we're coming out with an intelligent portal that is linked to the concept processor. You see, you don't want all your patients to see the same thing. You certainly don't want your patients to see all the laboratories and call you at three o'clock in the morning because of an abnormal lab that is irrelevant. You want the patient to see what you want them to see. You want them to communicate with what you want them to communicate with. And every patient is different and you have a method to your madness and practice will learn your methods from you in that and in everything else. It's fascinating. Richard, tell us one more thing you'd like to tell us about uh, Well, that I'm very grateful that you exist because the vast majority <laughs> of your competitors don't know what they're talking about. Richard, you're too kind. No, I'm being very honest and realistic. This is Dr. Eric Fishman with uh, Dr. Richard Lowe, founder, president, and CEO of Praxis EMR. Thank you.